Taylor Drive ass violin. Gosh. Well, didn't expect anything else from asparagus Tarzan like you. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. As you probably know, the German language is known for sounding rather harsh and aggressive. And even though I definitely think that it's pretty exaggerated when people imitate Germans simply by screaming angry sounding words, I can see that when we do get loud, no, we don't usually scream in normal conversations. It does sound a little more aggressive than when a French or an Italian person gets angry, for example. But one thing that you probably didn't know as a non-native speaker is that we sometimes say some pretty funny words and phrases when we're angry that, if you do understand them, can actually make it all sound way less threatening and almost a little cute, which is why today I'll introduce you to 15 funny German curse words. I've actually mentioned a couple of these words in my video, 15 genius German words that are missing in English before. So if you watched that video, some of these might sound familiar to you, or maybe you've even heard some of them in movies or TV shows before. I know that many of you have heard spoken German in World War II movies, for example, which definitely have some cursing in them. And German series have been popular recently too, like the Netflix show Dark or Babylon Berlin that many non-native speakers actually like to watch in the German original with subtitles. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Lingopi, a video on demand service specifically designed for language learning. Whether you want to practice your Spanish, learn some French or improve your conversational German, on Lingopi you can do all that while watching TV. You can choose from eight languages in total and for each of them, they have local content in all kinds of genres, from drama to crime, comedy, documentaries, and even kids shows, you can find everything. And the best thing is that Lingopi comes with everything you need to follow along as a non-native speaker and actively improve your language skills while watching. Let's say you wanna watch an episode of the popular German crime series, Zoko Hamburg, Hamburg Homicide in English. Before it starts, they show you a little overview of some of the words you'll learn in this episode. And then once it starts, the first thing you probably wanna do is adjust the speed you watch. It in. One of the toughest things when learning language is that native speakers always speak so damn fast, am I right? So this is a huge help. You can set it to half speed for beginners or 0.8 times for intermediate speakers, for example. Then of course you can activate your subtitles in the original language, in this case German, in English or even both. And if you want to, you can turn on this script view on the side, which is a game changer in my opinion, because it often happens happens that the subtitles are just a little too fast to actually follow along. But this way, if you didn't catch something the first time, you can just look over the script and see what was said before. And you can even jump back to that sentence and practice it. You can loop it, listen to how it's pronounced, and you can even record yourself saying it and get immediate feedback. As you can see, the phrases from the overview at the beginning are highlighted for you throughout the episode. And if you want to, you can add them to your personal word list simply by clicking on it. That way you can go revisit the phrase later and practice it with your flashcards. So Lingopi really has everything a language learner could possibly dream of, plus, What's better than learning a language while watching TV? It's ideal for learning how the language is actually used in everyday life. And the best thing is that all of my viewers get a 65% discount on the annual subscription for Lingopie through my link in the info box below. They even offer a seven day free trial, so you have nothing to lose. Just click on the link and check it out. Now let's start with one of my personal favorites, Aschgeige. It literally translates to ass violin, but it has nothing to do with playing an instrument. It's simply an insult and a rather strong one too. It's pretty similar to asshole, Aschloch in German, or simply Ash, ass, but maybe a degree less severe. It could also be translated to jerk or idiot, but it's important to know that Aschgeige can't really be used in a joke or something like that, so don't go to Germany and call people this for fun. Let's stick with the whole ass theme for a second and talk about the expression Arsch mit Ohren. 
ass with ears. While Arschgeige usually sounds pretty offensive when it's actually used and only sounds funny when you think about it, I feel like it's really hard to stay serious about this one, even if the other person is actually mad. I mean, calling someone Arsch mit Ohren basically suggests that instead of a human with ears, they're nothing but a walking ass with ears. That's just a really funny image. There's even a painting based on this expression by John Hartfield from 1929. So. It must be an older expression. The next one is also an insult that I personally think sounds really funny, even though those who use it are usually pretty serious about it. It's blöde Kuh, which means stupid cow. It's an insult that mostly kids use, and maybe it's because we've been so desensitized to curse words nowadays, but blöde Kuh to me just sounds so amusingly innocent. You stupid cow. Now, this one also has to do with kids, but it's not an insult like the other ones. It's the German equivalent of expressions like fudge or poop, and it's Scheibenkleister. I honestly don't even know how to translate this because it's a compound word that doesn't even exist outside of this. Scheibe would be like a window pane or disc and Kleister is paste or glue. So I guess it would be like a window pane glue or something like that. In reality, it's just a way to avoid saying Scheiße in German, which means shit and is probably the number one most used curse word in German. You could also say Kacke or Mist. Those are all synonyms, but Scheiße is definitely the one that you'll hear the most and also the one that's considered the most vulgar of those synonyms. And to avoid saying it when kids are around, some people say Scheibenkleister instead, which actually comes in really handy because it starts the same way as Scheiße. So you can go Scheibenkleister. <laughs> In general, though, cursing isn't as big of a taboo in Germany as it is here in the US, for example. We never censor anything on TV or in songs, and in a lot of families, it's pretty normal to grow up hearing and even using curse words. This is one of the words that I mentioned in the other video when I talked about your innerer Schweinehund, which we call the comfortable, maybe even lazy part inside of ourselves that we need to battle or overcome to do things that aren't really comfortable at the beginning. Like you have to overcome your innerer Schweinehund when working out or getting up in the morning. And it literally translates to internal pig dog. Now, what I didn't mention last time is that we also use this word as an insult for other people, as in du Schweinehund, you pig dog, which can be used with friends in a teasing kind of way, as in du Schweinehund, you little bastard. But it can also be meant as an actual insult. Du bist so ein Schweinehund, you're such a bastard. This one is simply a creative creative way to call someone dumb, and it's Einzeller, which translates to single cell organism, which suggests that the person only has one brain cell or one cell in general. Now we're getting to insults that are targeted at a person's physique. Of course, it's not actually funny to make fun of someone's body and looks, so don't do that. But the words themselves definitely do sound kind of funny and people often use these among friends too. The first one is Spageltatzan, which describes a skinny, possibly tall guy. And it literally translates to asparagus Tarzan. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just funny. I did find the English term beanpole as a translation for that. Do people use that? Because the German term Bohnenstange is a thing too. So that would be a direct equivalent. Another German term for tall, skinny, lanky guys is Lauch, which has been one of the most used slang terms of the last 10 years, but that one can be used in other contexts as well, like to attack someone's personality, for example. Lauch literally means leek, like the vegetable, and it can be a pretty bad insult, but people also use it in a teasing way with their friends, so it really depends on the context. Now we're getting to expressions that you use when you're trying to call someone a coward, and this first one is mostly used by kids, and it's honestly not even that funny, it's just brutally honest and it's Hosenscheiße, pants pooper. I know that scaredy pants is an English expression too, so that would probably be the closest equivalent. Now, if you want to be a little more mature with your insult, you can just call the person a Weichei instead, a soft egg or a soft boiled egg. Not quite sure which one the proper translation would be, but this one also implies that they're a coward or a weak person. Or if you really want to hurt someone, just bring in the big guns of German curse words and call them a Warmduscher, a warm showerer, aka a person that takes warm showers as opposed to cold ones. You know, like, like tough people would. 
The last one in this category is specifically directed at men and it's closely connected to this video of mine where I talked about differences in how Germans and Americans pee. If you haven't seen this, definitely check it out. The comment section is pretty entertaining too. I talked about how in Germany it's normal for boys and men to sit down when they pee. Not always, of course. It's normal for men to use the urinals in public bathrooms, for example, and everyone can do it how they want to at their own home. But when you're visiting someone at their home, it's polite to sit down as a man. Many people even have a sign up in their bathroom that says, please sit down. Now, many Americans, especially men, seem to feel attacked in their manhood when I talked about this and kept commenting underneath the video how in the US, it's an insult to say to a guy, I bet you squat when you pee or calling them a sitter. Well, surprise, even though it is a common practice in Germany for men to sit down to pee, we do have that same insult. Sitzpinkler, so a sitting pisser, which basically means that they're a wimp. Now, of course, it's complete bullshit to think that it makes someone girly and therefore weak when they sit down to pee. If you really feel attacked in your manhood when someone suggests that, you probably have a few issues to work out there. I mean, we live in the 21st century. This whole chauvinistic behavior of I'm a man, nobody can tell me how to pee hasn't been manly for a while now. And of course, equating being a girl with weak is complete bullshit as well. But I hope that we all agree on that one anyway. But the point is, yes, that insult exists in Germany as well. And it's in this video because it does sound kind of funny. Now let's move away from the whole coward topic and get to this beautiful word. Kotzbrocken. This one's kind of hard to translate, but it means something like a puke chunk, like a chunk or a piece of vomit. We usually use it to describe a person that just acts in a very unlikable way. I know that people also sometimes use this for teenagers that are just being really annoying and hateful and are driving you crazy. I actually think my parents have said that to me before. Du bist ein ganz schöner Kotzbrocken grad. You're a real puke chunk right now. Okay, this one might be one of the most genius German insults out there because it's not even a vulgar one and it doesn't actually make sense if you think about it, but it just hits the nail on the head. The term is Lackaffe, which literally translates to varnished monkey or something along those lines. Lack has a few different translations in English. It could also be lacquer or patent leather. And the term usually describes a well-dressed, snobby and arrogant person. I found the terms flash hairy, which is supposedly British English, or real flashy dude as English translations, but I don't know if that describes it as well as Lackaffe. And last but not least, I have on my list the beautiful German term Backpfeifengesicht. A Backpfeife, literally a baking pipe or baking whistle, is a colloquial term for a slap in the face and Gesicht means face. So put together, a Backpfeifengesicht is usually used to say that someone has a very punchable face, which usually means that you have a problem with them and have the desire to punch them. Let me know in the comments below which of these words you think should become a thing in English too or in your native language. And of course, feel free to share other funny curse words as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it could take your mind off all the heavy things that are happening in the world right now. If you want to, check out my Instagram highlights on Feli from Germany for ways to support the people of Ukraine with donations and other things. Stay safe out there, everyone, and I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers.